Story recapped here. Today I'm going to show you a Chinese science fiction fantasy film called Super Me. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Sang Yu, a young screenwriter in modern Chinese and global capitalism, seems like an average guy. He is passionate about writing, but his lifestyle takes a toll on his mental health. He feels exhausted on a train ride from work, out of nowhere, a sinister demon enters the train and shackles him. Sang Yu is terrified but wakes up and realizes that it is just a dream. In his rundown apartment, he reflects that his life is meaningless at this point after losing his job. In the past, he tried to seek help from dream experts, shamans, and psychologists, but none of them was helpful in his struggle. He uses the last of his money to buy himself a snack. The vendor notices that he has nothing left for himself, so he adds a free egg to his sandwich as an act of kindness. As he sits down and is about to take a bite of his first meal, a man from behind taps his shoulder. It happens to be his work partner, San Ji whom he runs away from after breaking their contract and leaving work with short notice. They both make up, and San Ji treats him a meal. In the restaurant, he grabs an aquarium to use it as a metaphor for what he is feeling. He says that the bowl represents the human mind, the fish represents consciousness, and the water represents the subconscious. He brings the fish out of the water, explaining that life is a struggle when the conscious mind leaves the subconscious behind, just like how he feels. Sang Yu confesses to San Ji that his insomnia is getting worse by the day. Whenever he closes his eyes, sinister creatures try to attack him. San Ji tells him that it stems from his laziness and that he should pull himself together. He decides to head back to his apartment, but it is locked, his landlord kicked him out, leaving all his belongings at the door. Without a choice, he leaves the building and decides to spend some time in a nearby cafe. Once again, the demon appears out of nowhere to hurt him. Sang Yu realizes that he fell asleep at the cafe and confirms his theory that his nightmares become so vivid when he sleeps. Already suicidal and desperate to get rid of his sufferings, he gets on the edge of a building, preparing to jump and end his life. Upon seeing the troubled Sang Yu, the friendly vendor calls his attention to offer him food, hopefully, so he could change his mind. This is effective, and they both sit on the building's rooftop to talk. The vendor asks him about his problem, Sang Yu opens up that his nightmares are too realistic, and he has not slept in six months because of it. The old man advises him to consciously think that he is just dreaming if he has an episode of nightmares. According to him, having a presence of mind can make him in control of his life and his dreams. The phrase it is just a dream is now imprinted on his memory, a piece of helpful advice to escape his nightmares. Sang Yu watches his love interest, Hua Er, from afar. She works at a nearby cafe where Sang Yu usually passes by. That night, having nothing left, Sang Yu trades his phone for some amount of money. Later on, he tries to shoplift a convenience store, but he realizes that his actions are not right. He puts the item back and pays for two loaves of bread instead. Outside the store, Hua Er approaches him, but it appears to be the demon who constantly follows him in his dreams. The demon strangles him, but he remembers the old vendor's advice and says, I'm only dreaming. Instantly, the demon disappears. He wakes up holding a priceless artifact that the demon chooses to kill him with several times. He brings the artifact to the trade market for some money, traders offer different amounts, but he sees more potential and worth in the item. Sang Yu believes that it is worth more than their offers, so he brings it to a more exclusive antique store. The owner offers double the price of the traders, but Sang Yu required more. They agree on a price, and he hands over the artifact. To celebrate, he buys a complete meal, a laptop, and gets a place to stay. He fixes his appearance and has a fresh start. He realizes that he has a rare superpower of bringing some objects from his dreams back to reality. To sleep faster, he takes sleeping medication. That night, he hears a knock on his door and dreams of being alone in an empty hallway. He tries to go back to the room and use the elevator but fails. Sangya sights a vase and tries to take it with him. Suddenly, footsteps approach, and he sees the demon again, holding another battle axe weapon. The demon runs after Sang Yu and attacks him with it. Sang Yu struggles as the demon chases him. It is able to reach him and strike the battle axe to his chest. He again snaps out of it and says that it is just a dream. Waking up safely in his hotel room, he clings onto the battle axe he brought from his dreams. He returns to the antique store to sell the item and gets a considerable amount of money. Sang Yu becomes rich overnight and splurges on things that he could not afford before. The lifestyle of the young bachelor completely changed from struggling to get by to being at parties and malls all the time. As he becomes a master of his dreams, the locations he ends up at are becoming grander. Dreaming that he is in a high-end museum, priceless statues and sculptures surround him. 
Sangye takes a closer look at the things and try to figure out which ones have the most incredible value. The golden items amaze him as this is all new to him. He gathers the items he can bring to reality. This time, the demon attacks by trying to shoot him with a machine gun. It is a far more effective weapon of destruction. He tries to dodge the bullets by hiding behind walls. Eventually, the demon hits Sang Yu relentlessly until he dies in his dream without saying his particular phrase. This causes him to wake up. He failed to get anything back to reality, so he tries to sleep again. As the demon is about to leave, Sang Yu manages to take two items before waking up. The deals that he makes become much more serious, but in return, the money grows. When dealers become keener on the source of Sang Yu's items, he builds a solid aura to toughen himself. Sang Yi stumbles upon him one day and barely recognizes Sang Yu, as he is now dressed well and looks pretty stable. Sang Yu treats him to dinner in a luxurious restaurant. He pays Sang Yi a significant amount of money to compensate for his shortcomings in the past. Sang Yu's feelings for Hua Er never went away. He visits the cafe one morning and finds out that it is actually for sale. After a night of drinking, Sang Yi gets knockout drunk, and San Ji brings him back to his hotel room. Curious to find about Sang Yu's secret way to wealth, he stays in the room to look for clues. Just in time, Sang Yu has another nightmare, he twitches on the bed and wakes up with a handful of jewelry in his hands. San Ji is shocked to find that Sang Yu has this ability. He begs Sang Yu to make him his assistant and treats him like a boss. In the cafe, Sang Yu returns and shows Hu Wa Er a big box of money, he buys the place assigns her to be the one to manage it still. She agrees, and Sang Yu couldn't be happier. They go out for dinner and negotiate about the business. Hua Er makes it clear that Sang Yu's intentions toward her are clean. That night, Sang Yu dreams that he is inside a money vault with an insane amount of cash. He gets thrilled and starts filling his bag with money. Unexpectedly, the demon comes from behind and punches him to the ground. Continuously, he stacks the cash for himself while the demon chases him. This time he learns to fight back and knocks the demon in return. As he gets more experience controlling his thoughts when he dreams, he develops more skills and powers. The cafe continues to attract more customers with the help of Sang Yu. But then he looks out the window and sees the vendor struggling with his small business. Secretly, he leaves money in the old vendor's bag. Sang Yu and Hua Er go for a walk after a busy day at the cafe. Their connection deepens, and he falls for her even harder. In another dream, Sang Yu is driving a very luxurious car. He moves it fast and circles around the place he is dreaming in. The demon attacks again by throwing a sharp weapon at him, causing his right ear to bleed. He hits the demon back with a metal tool as a defense, and it fades into thin air. After defeating the demon again, he ends up bringing the car into the real world. He lets Hua Er use it as they drive to her home. He reveals that he got it for her. While Hua Er drives, Sang Yu could not help but reminisce the first time he saw her and instantly fell in love. Since then, he followed and watched her patiently through the years. Sang Yu breaks out from writer's block and starts to write stories again. He eagerly finishes a story that he came up with and hands it over to San Ji. That night, he dreams of sleeping beside two women, he wakes up without bringing anything valuable. He sees San Ji crying while reading the script he wrote, he claims it is one of his best stories. Sang Yu throws a formal party in celebration of Chinese cinema and his works. As San Ji introduces Sang Yu, information about him and his achievements are not factual. The party is staged to impress Hua Er. That night, he dreams of being in a bottomless pit of gold. Crystals and other jewelry surround him. He walks on the gold and spots the demon just sitting still, not ready to fight. Sang Yu comes closer and tries to grab the gold belt from the demon, which seems to be the source of its strength. Before grabbing it, he senses an unusual feeling, the demon touches Sang Yu's chest and fades away. San Ji secures the belt in a glass box in the real world while Sang Yu's demeanor completely changes. Sang Yu brings Hua Er to a rooftop and orchestrates a fireworks display to surprise her. He tells her how he truly feels about her. While waiting in her living room, a dagger hits Sang Yu as he stands up. He checks on himself in the mirror and realizes that he has wounds. He quickly rushes out, leaving Hua Er clueless. The demon's touch did affect his real life, making him worried. He talks to San Ji about this, in which he replies that Sang Yu is just tired as events keep coming. That night he starts to dream again, but instead of facing the demon as he usually does, Sang Yu sees a clone of himself. The place looks very dark and dull, far from the usual and vibrant ones. The clone begins fading away. This worries Sang Yu greatly as this dream is scarier than dealing with a demon. At that instant, he wakes up and finds multiple scars on his body. These are the injuries that he got in his past dreams. 
On the way to the cafe, two men kidnap and force him into a van. A cohort of gangsters led by Chang Ji holds him captive. As a ransom, San Ji brings 10 million yuan to a place designated by the gang. Instead of handing over Sang Yu, they also kidnap San Ji. Sang Yu continues to plead with Chang Ji to let them go, as he won't be alive for long. Soon after, one of the gang members knocks San Ji unconscious. Eager to find out Sang Yu's means to get rich, the gang heads to his home to investigate and take what he has left. The gang enters his home and discovers the secret staircase that leads to a room where he keeps the expensive artifacts from his dreams. Chang Ji questions him about how he gets hold of these items. Meanwhile, Hua Er arrives at the lobby and asks the receptionist to call Sang Yu from the intercom. Sang Yu tries to send her away to prevent her from getting hurt, but she comes up instead. The gang holds her captive as well. Scared for Hua Er's life, Sang Yu persuades Chang Ji to let her go, giving him anything and any amount in return. While the gang member holds Sang Yu at knife point, San Ji gains consciousness and hits one of the gang members with a golden artifact. The three of them manage to escape. They continue to run upstairs as they realize that Sang Yu is seriously injured with a stab wound. Two of the gang members fight with them recklessly. San Ji sacrifices himself by stopping the gang members. In return, he gets brutally beaten to death while Sang Yu and Hua are managed to reach the top of the stairs. This serves no purpose as the gang members get to them and beat them as well. Sang Yu wakes up in an alternate universe that is surrounded by portals. He enters one, and a flashback of his wins and losses occurs to him. He tries to enter another portal, but he is trapped. His body disfigures and turns into a demon, just like the one chasing him in his dreams. The demon conceived from Sang Yu's thoughts breaks out from a wall in his apartment, strikes a dagger at Chang Ji, and kills the rest of the gang members. In the process, Hua Er gets shot. The demon finally approaches Sang Yu and points the gun at him. Sang Yu responds by saying that it is just a dream, all the artifacts instantly disappear, even the ones he sold. He wakes up at the convenience store where the demon, who pretended to be Hua Er, found him before. She brings him home and feeds him. Sang Yu remains confused as he cries out of despair. All along, he was not invisible in Hua Er's eyes, although he is not rich. Sang Yu realizes that everything is just a dream and may only be a product of his depression. He meets up with San Ji, who gives him money for the script that he made. His life seems to go back to normal until one day, the vendor to who he secretly gave cash returns the money to him. He tells him that he does not want Sang Yu's money because he knows where it came from. The vendor reveals a scar, and Sang Yu realizes where it came from right away. All along, Sang Yu is still trapped in the alternate universe. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.